and welcome to So You Think You're Awake, the show about life transformation through dream interpretation. I'm Michael Sheridan. On this show, through analyzing your dreams, I reveal your potential and the obstacles you need to overcome. I'm very specific. I tell you the magic power you have, what makes you magnificent, and the bumps in life that hold you back. These bumps are not in the way, they are the way. Last week, I did a terrific interview with Susan Sinclair, and I didn't analyze any dreams on the show. That was so hard not to do. But um, I, I, it worked better that way, to have it as a standalone interview. But today, I'm going to include some dreams, two dreams at the start of the show, that match in with the theme of what that show was about. If you want to have your dreams analyzed, go to dream-analysis.com and fill in the form there and submit your dream to the show. That's all you have to do. I take it from there. And these two dreams that I'm going to start with were submitted by regular listeners to the show. So uh, let's have a look at the first one. And it comes from Rosie. She says, uh, her comment is, I woke up feeling happy. I used to dread haunted house dreams, but now I look forward to them. Well, that's great. Well, wait till we see her dream. She calls it haunted house again because she has lots of these dreams. She says, I have a recurring dream about a haunted house. My dream house is usually a house, but sometimes it is a hotel. However, there was always one wing to my left that is behind a closed door, and this part is haunted. Well, the hotel tells us that you brought a gift with you from birth. Well, we know we know this is a gift. You've got the same ability as Susan Sinclair, actually. Um, so let's continue on with, with the dream. I used to be frightened to go in there in early haunted house dreams, but not anymore. This time, it was a hotel, and I was leaving. I said to someone who was with me, I have no idea who it was, just aware I had a companion, that I wanted to go to the haunted wing before I left because it might be the last time. I wasn't scared at all and went through the door and skipped down the yellow stairs saying, hello, it's me. Could you imagine doing that in a haunted house? So her companion is important. So it's a hotel, so it tells us that she has this gift from birth. And her companion uh, that she doesn't know means that she is not on her own when she's doing this, when she's doing these clearings, which is what this dream is about. But let's continue on. Uh, first of all, I saw a little girl through a window that just appeared. She was in school, but looked sad, and nobody was talking to her. I waved and she smiled and then the school and window disappeared. The little girl came towards me. Slowly, lots of other people appeared and they were all sitting around a really long table. They all looked a bit confused. Um, she says, I went around the table hugging each person and talking to them. But just let's pause for a second. So this person has the ability, just like Susan, to traverse the astral plane see what's going on and what needs to be cleared and basically how to put everything back in harmony. Her particular skill set though here is helping lost souls, people who have died and are confused about their state and haven't moved back to the spirit world. Now here's the thing, because we live in the physical world, we think that everything else outside the physical world will kind of map the same way it does in the physical world. Now that's not true at all. The astral plane is multi-dimensional. So you could have several people, several spirits occupying the same space, let's say, um, but never even be aware of each other's presence. And this is one of the reasons people get stuck there for so long. Uh, so I had one person who was good at clearings and she, um, the, there was a haunted house she was clearing. And when she uh, tuned into it, she saw a mother who was there trying to find her three-year-old daughter who had died uh, at age three. And when the mother died, she was like, I don't want to go to the light. I don't want to go to the spirit world until I find my daughter. Now, years had passed, but as far as this mother was concerned, no time had passed and she was simply looking for her daughter. And of course, disturbing the new residents of that house. That was many, many, many years later. And people like Rosie, they have the ability to pull everybody into kind of like the same dimension. And that's what this table stands for. She's able to pull everybody to the table and say, okay, what's going on for you? What's going on for you? And so this uh, other lady, she, what she did was she put the woman in touch with the, the child uh, with the help of her guides. And then she moved on. So she would no intention of hanging around, but she didn't realize how long she was hanging around because time doesn't really, time is an illusion. We, we are very aware of it in the, in the physical world because the whole system is designed to make us aware of it. Our bodies age, 
uh, we have night and day, we have seasons changing. The whole system is designed to really kind of like give us a, a kick to, to say, get on with things because y your life is short. Anyway, Rosie has this ability to pull everybody th to the table and they're all looking a bit confused. She goes around hugging each person. That's really good. As I passed close to the spirits, all the hairs on my arm stood up and crackled with static electricity. Okay, we, we're used to that one from Hollywood. Uh, there was a blonde haired man, maybe in his 30s, who stood out. He didn't know why he was there. The old man opposite him told me that he thought this guy might be in a coma. See, that's an interesting thing. Um, when you're in a coma, you do leave your body. You may not actually be dead, but you're still gonna be on the astral plane. Um, so this person's dream is very much a reality as opposed to a dream, let's say. I hugged him and I said, oh baby, you don't even know you've died. He looked at me and I nodded as did the old man. The old man said that sometimes spirits just disappeared, which frightened some of the others left behind. He actually called them people. But he thought it was just that they had worked out the path and it was time for them to be reborn. And that was his view. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting thing. So when um, when a spirit is helped to to pass over uh, and go back to the spirit world, they don't hang around there and they will just disappear. And that's kind of uh, alarming for the people there. But let's ignore that for the moment. At the end of the table was a woman who had died in old age, but her strongest self-identity had been when she was a younger flapper girl dressed in black and purple. That's how she appeared. This was interesting because I assumed they were all appearing to be the age at which they died. She said that most were, but not all. Um, and so that's an interesting one too. We don't have to keep the same traits as we have. In fact, people who are stuck for a long time, they might morph into, say, having a lion's head to try to scare people away. And so if you try to tune into them, they, they appear that way and run at you. And again, it's a frightened soul who is using a defense mechanism they, they've learned in the place they're in. Um, but yeah, interesting. The girl next to her was still linked to her boyfriend. Uh, who was still alive and seeing someone else. She was being bullied, <laughs> is what the spirit says. The spirit says she was being bullied by his new girlfriend. Now, we would always look at that the other way around. But after listening to Susan last week, you realize that quite often what we're doing is we're upsetting something else that's going on and that has every right to be in that space. And they're just poking at us saying, what are you doing? Stop doing that. But anyway, in this case, the spirit thinks she's the one being bullied. Uh, the new girlfriend just kept seeing her everywhere and was frightened. And uh, I said to her, this is the dreamer, I said to her, the living girlfriend, what are you doing? There's nobody there. And then she didn't see the spirit girl anymore. So here, what's interesting is while in this state, um, the dreamer is able to help the, the, uh, the living by blocking their ability to see uh, things that they don't need to see. Just interesting. The table seemed to be in the house uh, the table seemed to be in the house and other places at the same time because I spoke to the spirits at the table, but then stepped into the real world to talk to the living girlfriend. So again, like I said, the table is something that Rosie kind of manifests to pull everybody into the one dimension that where she wants to talk to them because normally they're completely unaware of their own, um, what they're doing and so on and so on. And uh, anyway, that's your skill set, Rosie. So if you didn't see the interview with Susan last week, go look it up, go to dream-analysis.com, go to radio shows and look at previous shows in my archive. In fact, that's something new that I have. Um, if you go to that web address and look up radio shows, you can see all the previous shows and you can select them. It used to be, you just could see the last show that I did. Um, so look for Susan's one, which is uh, the, last, the one just before this one. And moving on, let's have a look at another one. Um, and we've plenty of time left. This is from Anne. She says, and this is linked to the same thing. I'm asleep in bed and there's a woman in my house. A news report comes across uh, a monitor nearby. It flashes her picture saying that she is wanted and the FBI is looking for her. So Anne, uh, her skill set is to be able to tune into the spirit world and channel. And she does that, but she works with her clients and then tunes into other people while she's working with her, her clients. Um, and this dream is, uh, is telling her basically that she leaves herself open, that she's not closing down properly. Um, and we will see more of that in, in uh, the next part. But the FBI is positive in a dream. 
uh, police and dreams are positive. They are they represent your guides, and they're saying the authority is basically trying to find a spirit and let you know, let Nan know that she's kept herself, her connection open to this spirit, and they're trying to help her uh, with retrieving this woman and pulling her out of her space. Anyway, she continue, continues on. She says, I hear in my head that she should keep a very low profile and get out of town right away. She's packing up her things and she comes into my room and she says that she has to give me a hug, goodbye, and thanks me. Okay, so it's good. You should look over, but you should really pass her back to your guides and so on. Let them deal with it. Then she leaves, but she leaves my bedroom light on and the door ajar. So I get up to go turn off the light and I see that there's someone else in my house. So this is it. This is why it's linked to Susan stuff. Um, so Anne doesn't have any problems with spirits. She's able to deal with spirits and, and she's able to move them on herself. But she's, she's inadvertently leaving herself open, which is what this represents. Uh, leaving herself open after she does her work. And so this this week, this dream is a few uh, couple of months old, and she started a practice of closing herself down afterwards, and this doesn't happen her anymore. Anyway, she says, I go downstairs, and it's like a large waiting room, waiting room or the baggage claim area at an airport, but it's my house, and there are lots of people in it. They look sort of dazed. They're just sitting on uh, round upholstered benches or standing waiting. I'm trying to go to bed and I don't know why they are all here now in the middle of the night. So I'm shooing them all uh, out the through the glass doors. So the light and the glass doors um, are about Anne's psychic ability and um, that's sp the specific ability that glass doors and lights represent. And so she's not closing down and the dream, so she's ending up with basically leaving the light on and channels are this way. Um, and there is a difference between being a psychic and a channel, and I'm aware of that, and I'm kind of glossing over it here in this part of the dream. But she basically is leaving the light on, and she's just going to attract spirits, so um, which she can deal with, but why should she have to? Because uh, so, it's disrupting her sleep. So what she's got to do is do a process that closes herself down so that she doesn't get all these other spirits showing up um, at the time when she's done. All right. So that's it. They're, they're the ones connected with last week. Uh, I think I might have another Halloween dream in here somewhere, but let's have a look at an easy one. Uh, this one is from Benjamin. He, he says, in my dream, I eat half rotten meat, so I don't know what it could be. And then he says another thing, just thrown in with this, a question that I want to ask you, how can I get rid of the bad luck that I have? Well, there isn't really such a thing as bad luck, but there is, what happens is we attract into our lives what it is we're asking for and so that that's that question you could do a whole year on answering that question but i'm going to link it to what you have at the start of the dream where you say i eat half rotten meat so obviously that's not good why would you ever do that you wouldn't um so it's saying uh, meat is bad for you but is it every type of meat is bad for you no it's not it's only particular meats are bad for you that's what your guides are saying and so basically you pick up uh energy that is left in things, left around in things. And this is part of your what you're perceiving as bad luck. So you have to be careful what you eat. Don't eat food. Don't eat food from an animal that has been mistreated. Let's put it that way. That's an easy way of putting it. Because you pick up the emotional residue um, that's left behind. Now, for most people, that really doesn't matter. I mean, obviously, we don't want animals to be mistreated. But uh, in your case, you absorb that energy as well as absorbing the meat. And that affects what you attract into your life. Uh, and so you're going to attract misery and pain and whatever it is. So the easiest thing for you to do is be careful about what you eat uh, just based on this dream and ask your guides. If, if you can channel it, that would be the best way to do this. Ask your guides or even just try use your senses to see, would this food be good for me? And only eat in places where you get a very good feeling about the food and how it's prepared all the way back to the farm. That's what's important. Your meat has to go all the way back to the farm and it's eggs and things like that as well. So uh, it has to be treated well, otherwise you're gonna pick it up and that's gonna help you enormously. Then other things you can do is learn about how, um, what we think creates our reality. Uh, you know, it's the law of attraction is, is, is a great one. You use male energy to, to um, basically request and project, this is what I want with our thoughts. And then female energy to uh, combine with the male energy, which is like receptive mode, waiting for it to happen, uh, to create that reality. Um, 
how did I link your dream into this? But anyway, male and female energy is always required in combination to um, create the reality that's, uh, that you're going to be living in, that you are living in. Um, so you've got to be careful about your thoughts because that's seeding the reality uh, that you're going to get. Um, okay, let's move on. And still plenty of time. This one is from Lisa. She says, we, are, we were at a concert hall. My husband, Mike, and daughter, Samantha and I, we had shopping bags with us and we sat down uh, in some seats beside a famous singer, maybe Bono and his band. Okay, so that's great. So we know it's about channeling straight away because you've got um, Bono in the dream. Uh, we were very excited to be in good seats and to be with this famous singer. Then from across the concert hall, in walked three band members from Kiss. Everyone saw them and got excited and started chattering about it. They came around to our side of the theater and proceeded to sit down. So this is really good. Seems really good anyway, doesn't it? And note the divisions in the theater, two sides. Quite often that shows up in channel streams. Uh, but anyway, uh, Samantha and I got up to make room for them and my husband moved over to my seat and he told us we should leave because there was going to be a fight or argument between the, the two bands. I think that's hilarious. And two bands, of course, uh, twos come up in channel streams all the time because it's about two-way communication. Um, so this is about, uh, it's all about channeling. It's all about uh, Lisa's ability to channel. And so when she says that's going to be a fight or an argument, um, then it's, it's saying that she has issues with channeling that she's got to resolve. Um, and everything is going to be about the channeling. Obviously, the dream is also about her relationship. And so the first question I would ask, even though I didn't, uh, would be, what does your husband think of you channeling and your spiritual pursuits and so on? And that could be where, uh, that could be why that's in there too. So Samantha and I left. As we were walking away, Samantha turned into this tiny chick. Um, so tiny chicks are yellow. I kept picking her up to help her along. So this is like um, that color yellow, it mustard kind of yellow or chick yellow is about, and because she's tiny, it's about irrational fears picked up in childhood. And so you're, you've picked this up and Samantha is your daughter. So we know it's also about you when you were younger because Samantha is your daughter. But you picked up these irrational fears about channeling in childhood. And that's what you've, um, you've got to resolve. We went uh, up higher in the auditorium and we were walking across a narrow ledge. Um, so this is like fears. This is bringing up the fears that you have in a different way. So the yellow chick would be the same thing, but it's bringing them up in a different way. Uh, fears that you have about channeling. And a lot of people have fears about channeling, especially when we talked about what we did last week and what we talked about at the top of this show. But when you do it right, when you, when you set your, your energy space up, your space up where you're going to work uh, it, it harmoniously, then it's absolutely fantastic. I channel all the time. You basically can create that space anywhere you want. Um, but in the beginning, people can be a little bit afraid because, you know, I can't see what I'm stepping into, et cetera, et cetera. And that's completely understandable. The other thing is that we're often, uh, people are often persecuted in former lives. And that shows up in this lifetime when uh, they go to work using that gift again. We have the connection with, oh, this was really bad. Um, anyway, Samantha was in the form of the little tiny chick and I continued to pick her up and carry her. So again, it's that thing that you picked up. You still have that. So you got to get rid of the uh, irrational fears. And you say that over and over again in, for the rest of the dream. I had her transformed that way so she would be safer when I felt like it was dangerous. So again, it's you feeling, it's all about the channeling, feeling like the, the channeling is dangerous and you want to be safe when you're channeling. And again, that's a fear. We got to the point, to a point along the ledge and I just was scooting along. Uh, I, it was very high and very dangerous. It felt fearful for us. So again, the height is to do with the spiritual side, activating the, your higher pers perspective, um, your higher gifts, uh, and you feel fear when you're activating that. I kept moving things and throwing them off the ledge checking them first to see if they were important to make room for me to get by. Sam was so tiny, she was doing okay. I occasionally picked her up and carried her. We arrived at a corner and I got really scared and I said, I can't go any further. So you're a channel, you've got to deal with the issues that you picked up uh, that cause you to be afraid of channeling. And what the beautiful thing is, when we see it as the tiny chick, we know that it's irrational fear. So these are not fears that are ever going to mass manifest in any um, meaningful way. They're irrational. It's like 
the yellow chick is, is like we, we say somebody's a yellow belly if they're afraid of something. And that's what this represents. So it's not a, a fear of something real. It's a fear of something that isn't real. So um, dealing with it, doing it, getting into the channeling will allow you overcome this, even though it seems like a huge fear. Once you do it, you'll be absolutely fine. And uh, so let's continue on. Um, I've been having, this one comes from Maggie. She says, I've been having a recurring dream for a year or so in which I'm trying to walk uphill, but my legs are heavy and I'm very slow. They get heavier each time I have the dream, although the settings change. Sometimes it's stairs or steps. Last night, I was trying to follow a couple of friends through a large gap in a fence, but I couldn't fit my right leg high enough to get through. The dreams make me feel sad, frustrated, and embarrassed, and I try to hide the problem from those around me who are going about their lives at a normal, normal pace. So that all happens in the dream. And then uh, she says a comment, which is totally applicable to this. I've recently been diagnosed with an underactive thyroid, which has literally made me heavier, slower, and more tired. Could it be that? Yes, it could. But where did that come from? Of course, there are medical reasons you can end up with that, especially if you are um, in labor and they gave you medication to slow the labor down. That can, that can affect your thyroid. But uh, in your case, that's not what it's about. It's, we see it, it's about what you need to do is go back to birth and heal issues around birth, and that's going to help you with this problem. And we get that because you walk through a large gap in a fence. Now tell me, uh, you're 44. Do you walk through large gaps in fences going anywhere today? Absolutely not. Um, you may have as a kid gone between neighbors' yards and so on. So the gap, going through this gap or having difficulty going through this gap is symbolic of birth. And um, so we know because you have the same symptoms here and emotional uh, issues here, uh, you know, that you can't lift your right, le right leg high enough to get through. We know that it's birth is really the the, what the dream is connecting your issue to. So work on the issues around your birth and expect to see the thyroid issues diminish. Um, keep looking at the clock here. So let's finish by having a look at a dream from Dave. Um, Dave was recently on vacation and uh, his heart went into AFib. This happened in reality and it's only recent. And he went to the ER and he got sorted out while he was abroad and uh, everything is good he's, he's he's happy now but obviously it points to a problem with his heart and he had this dream after the after that episode uh, he's back home in america now but he, here's his dream he said i have forgotten money in a safety deposit box about ten thousand dollars i'm looking for a key to open it i can't find it i'm asking my two brothers about the key uh, i find some keys hoping they can open it but i wake up and he had other dreams <clears throat> that night and the following nights also where he's looking for money that's been stolen and there's hotels in the dreams and so on. So we know this goes right back to his birth. And I asked him about his brothers because I knew like when you see two brothers showing up, one of these is going to be, is the key because he's asking his brothers about the key. So one of these brothers is the key to discovering what it is that caused him to close his heart. Now we know that money and the deposit box uh, and trying to open something that is closed are always about the heart. That's in my book, um, all of these symbols. So um, I asked him about his brother and he has, this, he, uh, has one brother who always uh, straddles him with his problems. But the same brother who does that has no interest whatsoever in what's going on in Dave's life. And so people not caring about him, not caring about him is really what gets under his skin. And he says himself that he has a superpower to be able to identify people who don't care about other people. And, uh, and so that's the crux of it. So we don't end up with these superpowers by accident. We end up with them because something went on in our lives that really pushed this in our face. And then we, we became good at detecting this. And so this is right back at the start of his life. Uh, he felt he wasn't cared for. Um, his his uh, mom didn't care about him. And this is what has caused him to close his heart off. Well, if you don't care about me, I'm going to close off. Otherwise, I'm just going to be in pain all the time. And so what he's trying to do now is find the key to, um, to resolve this. And of course, the key is in childhood. And the key is in discovering um, what is behind 
why it upsets you when people don't care. And we know it's it's childhood and we know it's about the pain in childhood, but that's where he's got to go. That's where he's got to work. And right now he has the ability to do this with a therapy like cutting the ties to bind. Um, and it won't be a problem on his heart. But eventually you, you can end up with problems strong enough and deep enough that you can't use a therapy like that because the condition is too bad and it would just cause physical problems during the therapy. So it's always important to try to get these right at the start, uh, figure out what they are and work on them when your body is healthy enough to, to be able to do that kind of a therapy. But that's it. That's the solution for Dave. Go back to childhood, heal those issues, and that's the key to opening up. Um, you know, and I say this all the time. It's not that we're stupid as kids in childhood. Quite the opposite. We adopt traits and we, ad we adopt methods that are going to help us survive what would otherwise be a very emotional and traumatic childhood. So it's, it's a survival mechanism that's necessary and works. But then as adults, we no longer need it, but we still continue on in that vein. Uh, and that's uh, true for most of us. And a great way to think of this, like he said, a superpower is to be able to see people who don't care, recognize people who don't care. If you think of it this way, our childhood condition us, conditions us to see things in the world a particular way. It's like we put rose glasses, we, put, we tint the glasses, we tint our eyeballs uh, that, so that we can only see in a particular way. And that happens for all our senses. So he will see something in a room when somebody else will see something completely different because you've, they've been conditioned in another way. And if you think of it this way, it, a very good way to, uh, a good analogy would be the language that you're able to understand is a language that you learned in childhood. If somebody was to speak a completely different language, and so you had five people speaking in a room and one person was speaking your language, you can spot that language and you can make that one out. All the others are meaningless to you and have no impact. And it's the same with when things happen in our lives that are traumatic and we have to learn to deal with that. We become very good at spotting it. And so we spot it everywhere. And it's not that there aren't other things. There are, there are people in your life that care and there are people in every situation that care about you. But you don't see that because you've trained yourself to see when people don't care. So that's it. That's my show for this week. Uh, if you want to send your dream to the show, and please do, go to dream-analysis.com and submit your dream there. And I would love to do it on a future show. Until next week, I'm Michael Sheridan. Bye.